All right, Tar Podcast number 24, and we're back again. We, uh, uh, we're getting ready to promote for Tar 28, which is a pay-per-view match between Corey Duell and John Schmidt, which is our first all-around. Um, this is July 12th, and uh, the, the, the event starts tomorrow when you're playing eight ball, race to, I have to look this up, race to 15, then you're playing one pocket, race, race to eight, yeah. and then 10 ball, race to 21. And just to make sure that everybody out there knows what we're doing, each, it's a payday each day. Winner gets 1,500, loser gets 500. Each event is a separate event. So this, this series will last three independent days. It's not like a two out of three like right. the others have been. Yeah. And I th personally, I love this format. Yeah, this I think is this is gonna be way cool. There's and, still uh, pressure because you want to win and make more well, money, but it's, you're it's not only, all on the It's a thousand dollar yeah, right, right. It's a thousand right. dollar difference. You don't have to. Well, Corey and I are millionaires though, so we don't really think about the thousand. But oh yeah, <laughs> it's not very much money. It's just it's just zeros. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mean, we're going to be covering a whole gamut of things. And this is John's first time in the studio. He likes it. That's good because we like it. Corey's been here before. They're deciding. Uh, they've been practicing their break, and John keeps saying, "Damn, this table's tight." <laughs> so, it is, yeah. Um, we had a lot of questions coming in from AZ Billiards and uh, just different, you know, what about this is and what about that. So, um, first of all, why don't we talk a little bit about, like, you guys have been practicing with the Magic Rack and yeah. or the Delta 13, your option. It's Everything is uh, rack your own. Um, I don't mind the Magic Rack. I think, I think I'm going to be able to rack them quicker with the regular rack. I think so. Uh, you, you, know, know, you guys can Magic just Magic Rack's okay. Yeah. It's just going to be, you know, it's yeah. definitely more dependable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever, but yeah, and you it guys takes a little longer to rack them, but the but the balls end up so tight, it's worth it on a table. It's this just time. like you said, if you yeah. if you get a bad rack, you're going to get clusters. Oh everywhere. yeah, whatever time you're saving racking with the other rack, you lose in yeah. the game because well, it's, it's not a race. I mean, yeah. it's not a time race. We don't expect this to be. Uh, uh, and you know, and figuring out how long to make the races was kind of interesting because we want a five to six hour match, and there'll be right. an, uh, there's a break around two or three hours for right. twenty minutes, so it, it's really difficult to. It's a lot of this That's a hit and miss. If, if, if Corey beats me, ain't nothing. Or if it goes hill hill, then it's a whole different. Well, you guys are so. both relatively fast players. But if you had some people playing one pocket, you'd be playing a race to three in, mm -hmm. in five hours. Right. You know, and we're playing a race to eight. So you know, let me see if I can skim any of these questions real quick. Um, Why do we let them hit balls while you ask? Hey, that's that's cool. You guys are both mic'd up, so make sure you talk loud and clear. And okay. Sweet. And I'll try to. Oh, now I got you. This camera, that camera. Where? Sure. I'll work my way away from everybody. Yeah, go ahead. I have to get my. Playing straight eight here, so. Okay, last pocket. Yeah, bank and there's eight. been a lot of debate on the uh, internet. Like, this is open table, standard open table rules. And a lot of people say, "Oh no, you should play which you got to shoot what See, you yeah. make." And I have discussion on that. I believe that you should play shoot shoot what you make, just because it makes it a lot harder. I mean, professionals. I think I, I think, think it makes closer it to bar well, rules is is better. Not yeah. to ar not to argue with Corey, but I think I think there's a there's a fine line between luckier and harder. Yes, it will make it harder, but harder because your options are limited. What yes. makes him a world champion is the fact that he's good at he's good at looking at a table and figuring out which pattern's better. Yeah. Well, if you get stuck with one pattern because that's what you, then it's almost like it eliminates his knowledge. So sometimes you can get stuck really bad too when you break the balls and you got you, you, I, yeah, you have I to I personally I'll shot. tell you something, Mark. I've played eight ball two or three times in my whole life. I think I would have a better chance to win the match playing take what you make because hopefully he doesn't get good layouts and I get some good lucky easy layout. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to play open because I think that that's really the correct way to play, especially a table this tight. Uh, this we table's have, so tight, it doesn't matter what we, rules we play. We've never played eight ball on this table. This is going to be very interesting. Yeah. You know, but, and, and along those lines, and because uh, Joel Pope asked, what do you think about this concept of getting tables tighter and tighter? Where's the stopping point? That's well, you're right at the stopping point because I, I, I watch <laughs> golf and I'd much rather watch guys shoot 61s and, and have a chance to shoot course records and make eagles and break. Watching them all shoot 80 is no fun. Just like right here, uh, I think if I played straight pole on this table, I might have a high run of like 84 after a year. And is that any it's fun not to that watch? Bad, but it's, I think it's, having a variety is good. It's like yeah. in the U.S. Open. I watch U.S. Open and watch them, you yeah. know, hitting in the rough and shooting. One over or yeah. whatever, but I thought it was fun. I like to watch those guys yeah. like play watch horrible. Dog it a little yeah, bit. <laughs> I like yeah. to watch that. You know, it's, it's, well, I well, I think the difference is though is the people at home watching golf know that course is hard, and it's. But with pool, it seems like they get they kind of get like they play on bar tables, and then we play on something like this, and they watch us on live stream play and go, 
these guys are pros. These tables kind of make us look silly, which is kind of counterproductive because we're trying to look like good players and stars, yeah. and we look like like a barber up here playing. So, you, you know, know I, you don't want it. You don't want it to look too easy. That's that's the thing with the taking taking uh, open after the break. There's there's liable to be a lot of racks that could have been interesting, but. Yeah. You know, the stripes laid real easy. Where right. Stop, stop, stop. You no, got a point and there. It's, it's, and it's that's going to be boring. Maybe. But I don't think this table will, it'll never look too easy on this table. I don't care if we took the rails off. I mean, this is, a, this table so heinously tough. That, and then you got, you know, people talk about tough. It's tough practicing. But when you got money on the line, people watching, Corey facing me, I, I feel like I'm shooting, uh, yeah. you know, a manhole cover through a dime slot or something. Yeah. So it's, well, it, it's going to be interesting. Um, for sure. What, uh, what, what percentage do you think you guys will run? Break and oh. runs. The you know, I mean, there was you know, like the IPT was I 15, think the high was 15%. percent. So well, I think my break and run percentage IPT was like fifty six percent. Oh no, like that. no, 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 that was At a one win point, percentage or win percentage. Yeah, no, break and run out. The best in the world did like like thirty percent, and that's yeah. like boost the money. So on this I, table, yeah, maybe twenty yeah. percent. Oh, okay. you're a gangster right. if you do twenty percent on this. A gangster, I think. a straight gangster. gangster. Now I'm going to do forty percent, but you would be thrilled with seventeen percent. Now, Bobby, I'm, I'm going to be happy with 10%. 50%. I don't know. <laughs> you guys haven't seen my break yet, but I'm going to be happy with 10% if I can do that. Yeah, well, you know, it's... Uh, well, yeah, this is... But, you know, it's. I, I think it's a great setup. The rules are good. The table's plenty tough. Uh, it'll be fun for the well, viewers. We both respect each other. Right. You guys, I mean, yep. you're friends. We obviously. like and respect each other. I I've normally play these tar matches with somebody I'm really... Uh, not too thrilled with, but I like Corey. Um, well, at least you like me because I don't like you at all. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Fair. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but so it'll be refreshing to play a match where it's a little bit friendlier environment. But make no mistake, yeah. I mean, I need to beat him. You know, well, it's, there's it's, more money to win. Well, so. yeah, it's you know, it's a. But you know, it's the kind of deal where uh, if he beats me, he's going to take money. me out and pay for my round of golf. So you know, yeah. it could be worse. Well, I expect us to see some pretty cool shots in there. Yep. With this eight ball, you're going to see some creativity. Yep. I personally think eight ball is the game. I eight think ball is a great game. I, I, I think that's the game that even the pros are supposed to play. I well, I think we should play it because that's what everybody plays. Well, rotational plays. They pool can understand. is just too, it gets boring after a while. And it just, Whatever we play, I think there should be 15 balls out there. Yeah. I really? Mean, yeah, I don't think these short rack games are any good. Well, Trudeau had okay. it right. The whole world plays eight ball, and they watch us play eight ball, yeah. but then they watch us on eight ball, we're playing nine ball. They don't even understand they the rules. They don't even understand the No rules. wonder we have seven people follow Especially pro Especially when pool. you get into the push outs and, the, and then uh, this yeah. miss you shoot again. It's, it gets pretty crazy. So, uh, yeah. what, what, You guys got any, uh, anything you want to discuss that's on your top of your head? Like, I'll tell you what I got. Golf game? I got a, uh, I got a rack. Uh, a guy, Bill Wesley, he, he built me a, a rack for, for two racks of eight ball. Oh, you get God. two racks of balls, and you and you play oh, double I've rack eight balls. Yeah, so it's got thirty balls. Now that's a tough game. <laughs> what? Especially on a bar. Well, no, I got a guy that put sixty balls on the table, Corey. What are you talking about? My break and run out percentage in that game is about two percent. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. But I will say this: I think Corey is probably the most imaginative, creative. Um, Player, American player that I've ever seen. Well, I've, I've he's seen the kind of guy that's going to shoot shots like this more than other people and make them quite often. He's going to play the nine like rail first off the back of the 15 and stuff like that. He's very good at those kind of shots. And a lot well, of now that I saw it there, maybe I will play it. Yeah, Thanks so, for showing me that one. So eight balls right up his alley. I got my hands full and I make myself uh, a pretty good do. underdog. I will, either one of you guys, you know, people, I mean, you, you're a Derby City one pocket champion once or twice. Well, once, but I've won a plenty of one pocket tournaments. Well, but I, I still yeah. just. I see, still, I've never won a one pocket tournament. I, yeah. So eight ball never won. Maybe one eight ball tournament. How many eight ball tournaments are there? I've played. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm, I'm probably the underdog in the one pocket. I would say he beat me in. Uh, uh, what is it? Mountain ball. View. Mountain View. Oh, yeah, and the, the, the really I'm, nice I'm, I was supposed there. to get, I think nine eight from. Who you you just played a guy? I just beat Gentile. Chris yeah. Gentile. Yeah. I was supposed to get nine nine eight from him, and he just beat Gentile to death. So I guess you've got to you. I might be, I might oh, yeah. be the favorite. I probably have played more one pocket than Corey, but um, I don't play a whole lot. You know, again, according to the fans, if it isn't straight pull, bet against me. So I, I figure I'm the underdog at everything. Well, you know, <laughs> that's good. I like being the yeah. underdog. If you weren't a professional pool player, what would you be doing? Oh, I'd You'd like to ride motorbikes. Yeah, I, I've always wanted to be a cop, maybe like a, a drug, you know, under, like under a CHP drug? motorcycle cop. Yeah, that's always, uh, you know. I mean, I wanted to play golf, but so does everybody. I want to play golf for a living, but. You know, I didn't have the talent, confidence, What's or your, money. What What is your handicap playing golf? Um, just varies if I'm playing all the time and what course. But on an easy golf course, I'm a plus handicap. On a 
easy. Plus, what's that? Like, one, like I'm going to average two, three, four under par on an easy golf course. My home. He shot under 62. Par. He shot I've shot 62. 61 Holy three times and 62 Holy. twice. I thought I thought Corey was the better golfer. No. Oh no, I'm the best Negative golfer for that. pool play. Wow. Ain't even close. No, I need three. Get that out I need four right aside from here. <laughs> In case anybody wants to play me, if you've won a pro ten ball tournament on this planet, you can come play me some golf and bet what you want. That's my offer. I don't. You're, you're Johnny Archer is the next best pro pool player golfer. Really? Yes. Oh, and Corey's very good, but yeah. Johnny's Johnny's. I'm about, I I'm think about John, fourth down on the totem pole. How's Davenport and how's Strickland? Davenport, they're awesome. They're all great. But Johnny Archer's like a one handicap. And then Corey's a... Actually, there's probably about six six or seven pool players that can beat me playing golf. I'm not Let's playing. take it easy. He's on, well, he knows uh, he's on Sean camera. Sean Putnam he's will beat me. Sean Putnam's good. Yeah, Putnam can Sean, play. Putnam plays good golf. Archer, Oh, they all Davenport, play good, yeah. Putnam. Anything under a four or five handicap, you're a really good player. But, you know, I think the thing is these guys are I all pro... These, things off. these guys are all pool players that got into golf late in life. And I was a golfer high school and college and got into pool. So when I play those kind of guys, like like these guys we're talking about, they would have had a hard time even making my college team. So they think they're golfers, but they're good wow. for pool players, but I they're not, I didn't know that. they're not, <laughs> these guys aren't like scratch golfers, you know, like the world thinks. John played with, didn't you play in tournaments with Tiger Woods? Yeah, Tiger Woods twice and Boo Wee. Really? I mean, I, yeah. yeah. I because they lived in the, the same top. area. Yeah. But you know, I'm. Bra I mean, I hate to just start going off how great I am, but yeah, I mean, it's it's frustrating for me. It's fr well, no, but what's frustrating for me is for 20 years, it's like, how would you play against all these pro pool players? I would rob them all if they, if all I did was play golf. You started playing pool late. I played pool at 18. Well, you played so baseball I, too, I, didn't you? you? Well, everybody's done. I played little league no, no. baseball. But now I've but I've seen him shoot 85 to, to 92. So he can. Yeah, he, can he blow catches up. me when I haven't played golf in forever. You can blow it down a little bit. <laughs> I mean, to get off the golf course. Yeah. Um, but you started playing, I mean, you started. First time I hit a pool ball, I was 18. I was a golf nut in high school, and then I played college golf and um, got into pool. And uh, here I am, you know, but. How long before you were a pro, uh, pro um, I, Well, I have to really think about that, but I would say I quit my job at 23 and basically. That's played. when you, you and Bobby Hunter started. Yeah, like together. at 23, I'd say it took me four years to be what you'd call pro caliber, but I was weak. Physically and mentally as a pro, I couldn't have played guys like this. And even once I was good enough to play maybe guys like this, I still didn't believe it. And uh, so it took me probably six years to be successful enough in my own mind and have enough confidence to, to you know, compete and win and gamble. So, um, you know, because you could turn like pro at something, but you're still not like paying the rent. You're still, you suck, you know. Well, there's, a, there's always a point in everybody's career, and maybe you can define what it is on your... Where you technically have the skills, right? But you can't get there. You know, it's either yeah. you, you stumble. Yeah, and that was me at 23. I wasn't and, gonna and win anything. Anyway. It was a little bit of that and experience. And I, I mean, I'm watching guys like him on TV. I mean, I didn't want to play him for money. I would have been petrified. And um, you know, something about Corey that really impressed me in the year 2000 is kind of on a different topic. Yeah. But in the year 2000, he was winning everything. That's when he spanked everybody. Was playing unbelievable. Well, I was still doing what you call the road. Okay. And we gambled, and I got a big spot from him, okay? And, and I won like $4,000 of his money. And, and he handled it like such a gentleman. Instead of saying, play even, you heartless coward, like most guys would, he just shook my hand and said, wow, great plan. And, and, and I oh, had Oh, you would have beat me even. Well, you maybe beat me I would have, yeah, but, but that's... I gave him the seven ball, but he played good enough where he would have beat me even. Playing nine ball back. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, well yeah, he played good. it's easy to say you would have beat him even, but if I had to play you even, I would have been so nervous, well, I wouldn't have played didn't come up so, that But much. the point is, I gained a He's lot of a respect player. for him because I said, here's a guy that didn't act like an ass when he lost and he was a gentleman. So I've actually been kind of a fan of this guy for 10 years. I've pulled for him. Well, that's nice you that know? you have respect for him. Well, I, mean, you know, I mean, I think that's I do have respect for him because everybody's a gentleman when they win. I want to see how guys act when they lose 4,000 to you. And I've seen it and it's not pretty. Sometimes he acted like a gentleman, so. The problem with pool sometimes it's $10. If you right. Lose. It's, it's a, right. Pool so. well, John's one of the John's one of the only one of the best, I think, American guys when it comes to playing, you know, good position and correct shots, you know, that's and from stuff his, like that's that. That's from the straight pool background. You know, some of the some yeah, of the guys are just it has to be. I mean, he think? plays he plays good position and stuff, but some of the guys yeah. just shot makers and. So so of this three game series, I think Sch Schmidt, you probably think that your your best shot, your best game out of these three games, well, is, is the one pocket. Probably only because. I mean, my 10 ball break sucks and my eight ball break sucks. And if, if Shane Van Boning would <laughs> what break What about me, my break? They, my break's well, awful no, too. I, I, 
I make myself the underdog in the 10 ball and the 8 ball, really with the break and the fact that, you know, I just, I've never played 8 ball but a couple of times. So anyway, I'd say the one pocket's probably a dead heat, but the way it's going to work, here's the way it always goes. I'll win the eight ball. He'll drill me at the one pocket. Yeah, well, I mean, so yeah. we're trying to figure all this out. It won't mean nothing when it's yeah. all said and done. It's, it, you're right. That's the now, way it always seems to go. It's because you guys are both very, very capable. Sure. Yeah. Corey, move over where? Move over where? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, the camera's sharp. Sorry about Watch that. Watch where you are, Corey. Jeez. Sorry about you. <laughs> what other questions you got there? Uh, I know everybody wants to see two shots that Corey has shot. You know what's oh, the God. famous four or five ball that one? I don't think you can well, do this. I don't think yeah. I can do this. The spot shot he could probably do on this table. The, the, the wet shot? draw is going to be tough without polishing the cue ball up yeah. and all I'll, that. I'll but shoot a couple times. Try he'll, he'll try the spot shot. I'll try something. Uh, I, I think I can stop the cue ball. I just don't know if I'll make it. And, you know, we were talking about the pocket size. We never really finished that discussion. What, yeah, they're four and an eighth, and the cloth's where, where broken you, in. Yeah, but you know, you know, Moscone was five and a quarter. Sure. I went to the World Straight Pool. You, now, excuse me. I know. sound like Charlie Williams. <laughs> I went to the U.S. Open Straight Pool in 2000. You were there that year. You had uh, Mike Siegel so hot he broke his shaft. And those were big pockets. Well, and sure. And it, they, had, they had eight tables there, and the first match, Seven of the first matches had 100 ball runs in a race to 100 and a quarter. Yeah, there so, was a lot of hundreds, yeah. I mean, the and, thing is... But they were buckets. The thing is, these pockets, you, you know, I think the standard diamond is plenty tough. And, and, and all I can tell you is, people say that this, this table, when they lose, they'll use the excuse this table's loose. And my answer to that is, I'll tell you what, I'll play you some, and every time you miss a ball, you got to donate 500 to charity. All of a sudden, what? I thought it was such an easy table, yeah. you're never going to miss nothing. So... Yeah. so to me, the four and a half inch pockets are fine. This is this is kind of bordering on like it, it's going to make us look. It's pushing the limit a little bit. It's it's pushing the limit. It uh, well, it's pushing the limit a lot. I mean, this is on the the absolute edge of playable. Any yeah. tighter than this, you just couldn't really play. Well, you know, and and that's it, see, there's a lot of discussions. Been what happens if the game changes? Guy won't go for the shot he plays. Right. Safe. You, put, it, you put the crowd. Whoa! Oh, yeah. There it is hey. on film. <laughs> well, the thing is, they talk about snooker, Mark. Well, the pockets in snooker are tiny, but the balls are tiny, so yeah. it's relative. Yeah. But in snooker, you're not commonly firing a ball in with English and going no. for position like in pool. It's so, all angles. So snooker. this is yeah, like, it's, it's, you know, we're trying to fire balls in these little pockets and draw around for shape. It's it's yeah. uh, it's tough. It's crazy tough. Uh, any any uh, any kind of comments on the new ten foot table that Diamond's bringing out? Well, and I believe it's uh, four and a half. Well, first of all. The problem with that is, okay, let's say the pros all played on that and the amateurs all play on the bar tables. Again, there's such a separation between that they don't follow us. With retail space cost, I don't see how you're ever going to sell those because people are going to go, well, we can't. They're not, yeah, they're, they're, they're really. They're it, good there. It's, it's an experiment. I mean, I have my opinions on it, but Diamond's built them, and let's see what they Pocket do. Pocket size, again, again, if you want to start talking about making it difficult, raise the bet. You know, because well, all yeah, you got to do is raise the bet, and any right, yeah. table will look tough enough. That's right. The pocket's too I've big. I've choked so out. bad in tournaments sometimes on buckets. Oh. I've choked so bad that you didn't have I'm to give me tight pockets for a five. But I look like a total clown out there because I'm choking. Yeah. So if a table's easy, you're just not under enough pressure. I mean, <laughs> you know, I don't think you got to trick it up with ten footers and tiny pockets and different rules. Pool is tough enough. Yeah. But that's my take. I don't a know. Any, uh, I think you Ooh. like there's eight balls and way to go. Probably. I don't disagree there. It, yeah, people can just, understand it. Well, I was going to just see if you had any suggestions that might help. I think a Trudeau start pool a little bit, well, revive pool, whatever well, the word is, because pools in the dumps a little bit. Of we course. Can fix it. Well, let's not go too no, but, deep down no, I know, but we, but, but, gonna, but no, I, but we I, can I mean, fix it. I think fixable. eight ball. Okay. I think eight ball is, is a good change. Here's my biggest I'd issue like with pool. More really, we're going to be playing an all-around uh, match in Accustats. New Jersey, the AccuStats, yeah. an all-around. Uh, That's eight ball. Yeah, it's, it's like round a round robin. robin. Round robin. Yeah, yeah, round robin yeah. eight well, ball. That'll be fun. Yeah. I'd like to see more. Eight uh, just name me another sport or sport or game where the people that watch it can't figure out the rules. Like bowling. When you tell me you go bowling, I got a pretty good idea what you just went and did. Yeah. Golf, same thing. Fishing. Pool, it's like, you know, there's so many different games. that well, It's I like we just need that. to play one game no. and just call it a day, I, man. I, 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 and if it's eight ball, that's fine <clears> with me. Then let's master eight. Snooker, they play one game. Little old ladies. Watch a one four seven, and they go, man, great. Oh, I know. No, they understand what they're looking it, at. It's very simple, you know. You know, you know, red color, red color. 
You know, and the uh, and the uh, the game that uh, AccuStats Pat Fleming is doing is uh, it's eight ball, but you know it's the old it's the old uh, black ball type of balls. You've got yeah. you've got <clears throat> seven yellow balls, and seven red balls, and one black ball. They're not numbered. Well, I I think that one of the main problems with pool. I mean, we we're starting talking about that, but all this so gentleman. Basically, but how many times do these guys slot? I mean, it's really not a factor, you know. Uh, what is it? It's not. He said slot would count because you can't. You can't call a ball because you got seven reds and you got seven yellows like that color, and then the black ball. So if you were to go into a pack, I wouldn't know if it was that one that went in or another one. Yeah, I, I think keep the stripes and solids. Well, I know it's for TV purposes. They want to be able to. You know, I think people know what stripes it's. I mean, maybe just take the number off, but yeah. people know yeah. what the stripes yeah. and solids are. Yeah, You're, I think you everybody that's, that's, that's ever played. The thing of it is, with the numbers is what allows you to call. Ball. Sure. Yeah. 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 You want to keep the numbers. Just keep you know, the balls the way they are. Everybody the knows that. The thing is, here's here's another They're thing so I think is so huge with this game. Oh. We focus so much on the character of the players. Well, they, you know, that's you ridiculous. Focus, that is not what holds enough. pull back. It, yeah. You watch UFC fighting, NASCAR racing. When they have a fight, that's the biggest thing. That's what gets all the viewers. Hockey, right? everything. If hockey. Were, uh, if you took uh, the fighting out of hockey, who would watch? If you took the crashes out of NASCAR, who would watch? With pool, you got Corey and I like this. We never say a word. We get up and we shoot. We're, we're gentlemen. Yeah, that's going to go over great on TV. If anything, you ought to mic us up and I ought to kick him square in the face. <laughs> no. You see, know? see, I agree with what you're... It's, it's if like we want to make library. money and get on it's TV no or we want to be gentlemen, it's like, which is it? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what really is holding pool back, in Please. my opinion, is there's, there's a lot of league players out there and they play pool league and they pay their money into the pool league and there's so many players out there and then the league they're playing in it doesn't, doesn't kick to. anything back to yeah. professional pool. You're running a league here. Yeah. You get CSI. Yeah. You're running the, the BCA pool league. I, I try and run a league myself, yeah. Universal Pool League. Mm -hmm. And we try and put on professional events. I think if the amateurs out there could support the leagues that are supporting and, 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 the pros. But here's the amateur comeback. You know, I've talked to people we, it's, it's yeah. pretty amazing. Don't pay, and don't do throw your money away to, to something that's not say helping I don't pool. Care. Right. But the amateur well, would care. Well, the yeah. amateur would care if I said, well, "You're a good player. You're an amateur. Guess what? You can quit your job making 17 grand a year and come make two million playing pool." They would care, but there's so little money in pool. Like, screw the pros. If we were millionaires, people would care. They'd well, want to be us. I also agree right? with you. The, the problem being, and I, I, I agree with what you're both saying. There has yeah. to be a connection between amateurs and pros. Show mm -hmm. me a sport that doesn't have a connection between. Well, a successful pros. sport. They all have a yeah. connection. You know, yeah. bowling, you got junior programs, baseball, right. little league. And I mean, Justin's games. right. They don't care, but there's a reason they don't care. They don't know who we are. And the seven people who do know who we are, they go, I pay more in taxes a year and that loser earns. Well, here, let's That's let's, the I'm problem. Not, not let's so, do this. Let's not go down yeah. because this is what our podcast turns into every week. Yeah. People are sick of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They got you guys here. They want to talk about pool. Right. What, what else they want to ask about us? Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I mean, you, you asked the question, what do we think would help pool? That's what we think. Yeah, Are they well, firing in questions yeah. right now as we're talking? Uh, one guy had a question. He said, uh, does it make a difference for you on the color of the ball? Green or blue? Is that no, no, ball? just the, no, not for me. I like it either way as long as it's good, clean, new I ball. actually prefer blue. I don't know why. It just yeah, seems a little bright, uh, brighter or whatever. I, I think the know. balls contrast against the green better. Like, mm -hmm. I you tell you, my favorite really? cloth is that camel, that tan cloth. I think that looks great. I and think it's, it's a great color. Right? Really? It's, but that's because of the contrast. Now, I'm colorblind, but I can see the contrast. Right. The, I, I think the blue is the best color. Uh, and, and that's because we actually sp spent a diamond, uh, hired yeah. some people, and they did it. But the key is the lighting. Sure, yeah. You know, you is... get green cloth with bad lighting. Oh, it's oh, terrible. Oh, man, you cannot see the yeah, edges. Yeah, that's a right. Bar. You ever played on a bar table with, like, two light bulbs oh, that's red? Yeah, sure. Red cloth? And uh, yep. I've seen that sometimes. It's just, it's atrocious. So. Um, all the time when we have these podcasts, we've got some great players. Nice shot. Um, they want to see like some some discussions on aiming. Okay. There's been a little bit of debate because there's been a lot of thing on your backhand because uh, uh, Bustamani was uh, pretty thorough on how he, you know, mm -hmm. his backhand grip. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, you know, don't get me started <laughs> on aiming systems. I tell you, if if here's my <laughs> God. No, go ahead. I, I, maybe they work. But nobody's telling me the ones that work because if they work, you're not. First of all, you're not factoring in swerve and deflection. Okay. Now, what if a guy comes up with a delivery system? That's different. But aiming's adorable. But you still have to deliver. So you can aim perfect. If those aiming systems work, well, there would just be like four million people that played like Corey. 
but it's year after year, it's still Corey. So these aiming systems are overrated. They're a way to sell videos and books and make people pontificate about their own greatness. And believe me, if it worked, then they'd be out there winning tournaments well, and Stevie they're not. Well, Stevie Moore's uh, been pushing that. Steve, but what Stevie but Moore doesn't get is Stevie Moore, you could put a bag over his head, he'd run out. He's a great player. Yes. So he's playing great in spite of his aiming system, not because okay. of it. <laughs> I mean, think well, about you know, it. He's already yeah. a great player. You could, yes. He could aim at the wall and he's going to make the ball. Yeah. And it's a way to give him comfort and confidence. confidence. He's, he's kind of like tricked himself into thinking this aiming system works. Yeah. I just can't see how I'm going to use English here and I'm going to aim bottom right English. So I'm aiming out here. It's got a squirt. Well, what aiming system is going to work for that? It's only going to work with center ball. Okay. Well, you know, and so and all these guys with their aiming systems can get like weight for me, and I don't use do an you, aiming uh, system. So what, I don't. you guys use? <laughs> yeah, the one that he's talking about. It's I, I haven't been able to comprehend okay. it yet. Yeah, it's uh, it's something about pivoting in the back foot, and I don't know. Oh, I don't. Uh, I'm not and sure I really about don't it. know. What uh, what you guys it's, use uh, low deflection shafts? Yes. My 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 piece of advice, if anybody cares to the viewers at home, oh, no, is forget don't. all the aiming systems. Just like when you throw a baseball to first, you just do it, right? You don't aim it. There's no aim that you do it, you feel it. It's the same with pool. You get a mental picture and you do it. See, I agree. Aiming systems are the most ridiculous, overrated thing. If I mean, you're having the pros problems, scoff at that stuff. They're like aiming systems, really. Yeah. I, I mean, if nice. you're having problems with aiming, you know, like he was saying, that low deflection shaft. You get one of those low deflection. There's a lot of companies make low deflection shafts. Well, yeah, there's gobs of them. They're, they're, it, they will help a little bit. I think. Oh, yeah, that I helps. think the reason why people have the problem with aiming, aiming systems is the main reason. What the amateurs that I teach, they don't aim the cue ball. They aim the cue stick. And if you're if you're hitting center ball and you aim the cue stick, at like say you're trying to hit this spot on the 11. Right here on the 11. If I aim the cue stick, if I'm trying to hit that spot on the 11, I hit center ball and I aim, I'm going to hit it fat. You see? Yeah. Or if I'm hitting right English, then I, you know, wherever. And that would you only gotta, work if you're using center you ball. You got to aim the, you got to aim the ball. Well, Don't so aim you're the stick. Basically, you basically use like a ghost ball. You know, I mean, you know. Yeah, I aim, the, I aim the cue ball at the spot I'm trying to hit. Right. I don't aim the cue stick. I think a lot of amateurs aim the cue stick. Well, look, Mark, think like of it that. like this. Let's say I had the highest deflection cue on the planet Earth, uh -huh. and I'm going to use left-hand English on the shot. I'd have to aim over here at you. Why? Why? I agree. But I'd know, oh, it's going to deflect the cue ball over there. Well, a nice aiming system. Yeah. You have to just feel how much squirt you have with your particular Yeah, here, check my aim on this. an old Zamboni with an ivory. My, I got if they would quit spending so really much time online learning aiming systems, they'd go hit more balls, they'd become yeah. better players. The old, the There's no shortcut system. to it. Oh, yeah. Setting on AZ birds looking for aiming systems isn't going to get here, it. Here, check my aim it's on like this It's like the golf swing guys. they John, got a check, thousand videos. Check yeah. my aim on this shot right here. How's that? Yeah, nice yeah. Is my aim good? <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. Right? But the guy that goes to the driving range till his hands bleed, that's the good golfer. You can't watch it online and go, oh, there's got to be a system for hitting a four iron 200 yards on a green. It's the same with pool. We've hit a million pool balls. That's our system. Well, that's, that's the old ham. Hit, hit a million balls. Ha it's yeah. I mean, you're not going to get good at But I've heard of guys aiming at, the, aiming at the light on the ball. Aiming at the, they, they aim the edge of the shaft to the point. Well, there's a, there are well, certain shots. You know, I've heard it all. You know. Yeah, you can do that. Or I don't like that. Ball. I don't like the that. Shaft. He used the ferrule, actually. I don't That's like using the stick. I aim the ball, not the stick. Yeah. yeah. I think that might So help. anyway, that I could be wrong. I'm not I don't know if I'm well, I right. I just think the aiming systems are crazy. I think that's one of the things that makes this game so unique because you're you're aiming a round ball at a round ball. It's a whole deflection it's, it's, and swerve is what makes this game yeah. so tough. If there was no such thing as that, you know, you just hit whatever English, yeah. but this thing goes sideways off your stick. That's why the game's so impossible. Yeah. You know, I mean, you yeah, got a cue ball that's a curvy. A non-player just does not appreciate how difficult this game is oh. to get good at. I looks like, you. looks like we how just move on. How hard is it for you to go to a low deflection shaft? Impossible. Yeah. It was the, it was, it ruined my career for about two years. Uh, actually, I don't have a mic on, so. Tell oh, okay. Me and then yeah, I, the other, just the other day, to prove a point of how much you can get used to some. Now I play with this this Fury Q with a with a low deflection shaft. I got my hunter shafts out that I played the best pool in my life with. Mm -hmm. I can't even make this now. So I'm trying the, to make that the hunter stick. The question stick. was, is how, you can't, you, I can't you had spin a problems it. getting used to a low deflection oh. shaft. How hard was it to switch it? Yeah, how hard was it? It ruined me. For two years, I couldn't beat well, yeah, anybody. You ran 400 balls with that thing originally. Yeah, but that shoot, see, the misconception about straight pool is, 
I'm not shooting high speed spinners. I'm shooting slow speed spinners. It's, the deflection was very little. Yes. Playing nine ball where I had to pound the white ball around. Rotational pulls so I had no chance. Yeah. No chance. Really? That's interesting. So you're using a standard shaft? Or no, I'm using deflection? a low deflection Fury shaft. You know, but it, um, it was the worst. My advice on that is real simple. Get one cue that's a good cue and never change. Never change shafts. I really outsmarted myself and thought, oh, I'll change. And I'll, it was the dumbest thing I ever did. And I was a total non-factor on tour for about eight months. Wow. I just was going to and out, just, just playing horrendous. Yeah. People thought I was on drugs a couple times. They're like, what, what is wrong with you? I've never seen you play pool like this. It's the worst pool I've ever seen yeah. a pro caliber player play. Nothing against that cue, but no. you can't play 20 years with one thing and change. It's dumb. Some people just can't change. I couldn't do you it. Know, I've, I've only tried the low deflection a couple of times and I, just, well, I don't well, play enough to... Well, I'm okay now, but it took me like three years. Yeah. There's not enough money in pool for me to take three years to learn how to do something again. And, you know, uh, one other question is somebody asked, that, I guess, Corey, you like a real thin tip? Get thin where, tip? Tip. Now, where your tip's like half or a third of original size? Uh, do you, I don't you, like it real thick, but uh, this, is a, this is a little bit big for me. And, and this is, is about a hand, this is, a, this is three quarters. And this why is three is quarters of it. Why do you well, like a, why do you less, why do you that's like three quarters less of it. tip? Uh, it hits real soft if it's real spongy and high. I use a, I use a put soft tip. Oh, well here, why don't I just put it up here? No, put it on the table, it's easier for me to do it. Okay. But the whole thing, just lay it down so I can show the whole cube. Making this harder than it needs to be, man. Okay. Now, <laughs> and, this, and this is my new line of cues, Woodpecker Cues. Oh, this cues. is one of your Woodpecker, shit. Yeah. Well, plug the hell out of it. Tell them about it. WoodpeckerCues.com. I've been shot. I've been actually running around. I've been promoting the cues, so I've been going to a lot of pool, pool rooms. Cues. He's been selling a lot of them around. This pool is really nice. This is this is the highest end one. This is all ivory in here and ebony, purple. Now bar. you don't make cue sticks. No, I have them made. Okay. That's you know, nice. and. Uh, but I design all of them. Okay. They're all my designs, all the dimensions, everything. So uh, pro taper, low deflection, pro or standard pro shaft? taper. This one, this one's a low deflection uh, shaft. All the shafts are lower deflection, but they're at levels. You know, they're not super low. Um, really? Okay. So, so you're not using like a predator, an OB shaft, or tiger shaft. It's a, your own shaft, but yeah. you're making. Yeah. Are they? Uh, I guess it's. They just. It, they, they're radial, or they have the shorter ferrule. Yeah. This one doesn't. But the, all the ones that, I'm, that I've been taking around, they have shorter ferrule and they're lower deflection. So how do they get yeah. in touch with you if they want to buy one of these? They contact woodpeckercues.com. Woodpeckercues? I want to I want to chime in on something because yeah. I feel yeah. like I I'm not trying to tell people uh, to not you know OB shafts and predators and furies all the makers they're great. Okay, I would have loved to have started with those 20 years ago. I'm just saying to go from a standard shaft and switch. Some people was tough on me, business. but but I'm not saying those were bad equipment or bad shafts, huh? No, I was just thinking to myself how that. I was thinking when I said it ruined my career. I didn't mean it that way. I, I think these are easier to play with. This is what people should buy: Furies and Predators and Mez and all these low deflection shafts. That's the way to go. But for me, to it, change, it was a big change, and I'm yeah. trying to stare down guys like Bustamani and Corey Duell and not sure about my equipment because it's a change, and I just it's, I couldn't it's, do it's, it. You're, I know it messes with your head. But Nick Faldo said he goes, I was playing the best golf of my life, and all I did was change the putter grip on my putter, and I couldn't make I, well, could, I went crazy. <laughs> he goes because it was a change, and I, it just freaks you out. That, but that's, that is anyway, no, and, that's, and there's no deflection in a putt. That's <laughs> nothing compared to a pool shot, you know. But you know, it's Eight interesting ball. because I don't remember the brand name, but there's a putter, there's putters that are getting, they have a 10 year waiting list for putters or some crazy thing. Well, I'm glad you got that on film. I think he meant to do that too. Well, I just, I mean, I, trick, uh, here, I got a trick shot. Here, I got a trick shot for you guys. That was cool. This is my favorite trick shot. All right, let's okay. see. It. It's kind of tough to set up. Okay. Of course. We need a magic rack. See if they want to tap it in. No. <laughs> Takes a little while to set it up. Okay. Well, we can talk while you're setting it up. Okay. Oh, that was it. That's it, right here. Oh, okay. he's gonna play the. Uh, what are we doing? Wait, wait, wait. Don't Playing shoot the one Hold on. Oh. There it is in the side. And oh. Man. Yeah, he picks a trick shot on the yeah. tightest table in America. No, he just he just. Lets no, that ball it. on the side. That's the one I was making. I said. I do trick shot shows, by the way, too. <laughs> You, you might want to call it first next time because even I was lost on that one. <laughs> well, yeah. and I want to so, get uh, any predictions. 
I'm just curious. Now, well, you know, the first day is the. I'm going to predict that I'm going to miss a really easy ball. Well, well I know you're going. A really so easy one. I mean, really. Easy. I, I'm going to just lay out some excuses. I had a minor surgery about 10 days ago. I've played no pool. I'm actually in pain as we speak. And uh, I got nothing to lose and everything to gain. I feel, feel you know, Corey's a huge favorite. And, uh, you know, I'm just well, going to throw some Visine too. in his drink. I, and I rode a skateboard two weeks ago and I sprained my ankle. Okay, it's well, starting good. to feel better now, but. You know, I just want to throw that down. Do we need to go get some more guys? Or? <laughs> yeah. No, take it easy now. No, we're not in that bad of shape. We'll be all right. Yeah. I can take some ibuprofen. I'll be fine. Because I didn't hear any of these stories when I called you. No, no it ago. happened after you, we lined up the well, game. John, tell him what your problem was. Well, I, yeah, he, from I, golfing, I, I had a nail on my right foot kind of get like bothered me, and I tried to fix it. And then it got ingrown. I had to have part of my nail removed. You want to show? It, you want to You want to show all the viewers? Yeah, dude, it's well, it's healed up now, but it's. It's it's it was the most painful thing I've ever been through, and I've broken bones before. It's it was unbelievable pain. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to shoot with your butt towards the camera, because everybody wants to watch your grip. And you see, you have uh, a very I have a strange grip. No, you I have do. a very. Loose I never realized that till the first time I watched my. No, your yours is very. It's it's kind of gay. I know. It is. <laughs> it is. Right there. It, it is gay. It, it, <laughs> Bill Morant says I look like I'm holding a teacup, like. But I stick my pinky out and I lock my wrist forward. To me, you know, I talk about this when I yeah. try to help somebody. You have moving parts here, here, and here. Yeah. Well, if I can just eliminate one, C.J. Wiley did it the other way. He held it like this, so he's eliminating a moving part because your he wrist is locked. See, that's you missed that's more balls from this right here than anything, yeah. right? So I just eliminate that by locking it. Unless I got to do a power shot, then I go like this. Sure. So then you can be Mike Davis, and he locks his. Well, the reason I hold the cue loose, and maybe I'm wrong on this, this is my theory. Imagine if you have a splinter, like, in your face or something. Are you going to grab a, a pair of pliers, like, with four? No. You're going to take something and be, like, real delicate. Your fingertips have more sense in them and more touch. So when you're playing pool, position play, like, if you just, if you just glued the, the cue into the palm of your hand and played pool, you right, you don't have any touch. No feel. You have way more touch here, and I think the top players, most of them, you know, they, they're holding the cue in their fingertips. These are what... You and Bustamani are the loosest out there. Probably, Efren, yeah. Efren let's, used to be really let's loose. Let's see your stroke here. Yeah. Hit, now, on a big power a shot, I might kind of grab it a little oh, bit. Yeah, but, but that's different. But for, like, my speed control, you see how loose I am? You can really see it from this side. Yeah. Maybe stand over. Yeah. Shoot towards me. Stand at the left corner and there shoot you go. the other corner. Like no, this. no, no. Right no. Here. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And hit, actually hit a couple of balls. Other corner. Other corner. Shoot towards Back this corner. corner. Oh. John. John. Oh, 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 down the rail. Stand oh. here. No, stand at the left corner pocket right here. Now, shoot. Like that. Shoot there, there you go. Oh, there I got you. Go, now, let him, let, let him get your camera in on you. There you go. So, yeah, see, he has, it's it's just, it's so fluid. Well, there, and I tell you what. Do I have time to explain why I do it that way? Because yeah, I, I, this is, absolutely. This is my theory on this, and I could be crazy. Could. I am crazy, <laughs> probably. But, okay, if you took a cue and you draw it up on a string and draw it up to the ceiling and drop it, it would swing straight, right? Gravity, you know, the cue, you know, thing in motion wants to stay in motion. When you play pool, I think of my arm bones as like a string. I'm swinging the cue on this string, right? So if I'm holding it loose, it'll run straight by gravity. Why take your muscles and like micromanage it and get here and try to steer it? Just I think you should think about that every shot tomorrow. Oh, I do. Think about Just it every like shot. this shot right here, I'm aiming it now, and then once I get down on the shot and I'm holding it loose, I just try to just throw the cue down the line. I was going to say, it's almost like throwing the cue stick. Because and it's a light stick. It'll go straight if you don't get your muscles and, in and the way. And you let the stick do the work. Exactly. There's this a is huge, a delicate game. There's a relationship between a 21-ounce cue and an 18-ounce But now, can you draw cue. the ball length of the table and oh. still do that? Oh, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm going to throw the cue down the line in the same watch. I'll do, I'll do a draw shot holding it with one finger just to kind of show you what I mean. Okay, I'm going to just hold it A lot one. of people are getting into this. Well, maybe technical my middle finger. Yeah. Right? Just to show you the draw. See how easy it come back? Yeah. When you take a 19-ounce cue and get it moving, that's what draws the ball, not your hand muscles. I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, but everybody's but different. Jim Rempe did it like this, and he was one of the best to ever live. I mean, he has like a death grip on it. You know, you can almost see like every knuckle, and, and he shoots like that. That's yeah. the way he does it. But for me... He, yeah, he's also one of the first people to use an open bridge. 80% of the time. It's you know, amazing. Rempe. It helps. Like that. Who, Jim Rempe? Jim Rempe did. Jim Rempe. Helps my speed control because I'm holding the cue in my fingertips, very loose. Uh, it kind of looks silly, 
But it works no, for me. No, but it's so. fluid. It's yeah, it helps. Cool. You know, I'd like to see those guys go at it again. I'd like to see a uh, senior know, I, tour. I'd I, like to see another senior tour. Well, we well, need to get an actual young, young guys tour yeah. first. Come my on. grip? Yeah. Uh, my grip's probably pretty boring. Dave I don't Siegel, know. you owe me. There's Dave Siegel, Spider Dave. He's, he's gone. He's getting anal about the hand grip. So he was, I want to see more animals. Well, animal. I know I probably just insulted I a million people about the hand grip. I just feel like. They would do themselves yeah. a favor if they just get over that and just go practice and quit well, no, thinking about all this stuff. Well, no, they're supposed to be like, do you grip? Are you gripping with all four of your fingers? Gripping or so. resting? There's a difference. Yeah, he's kind of resting all four yeah. on the cue, which is okay. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just kind of, yeah, open them up and. It obviously so, works. See, both you guys are relative. You're very loose, and Corey's still pretty loose. I mean, I can see daylight through everything. Yeah. Cool. Except well, Corey holds the cue way back at the butt. And I don't Whereas remember him doing that before. Yeah. He's always played that way. Really? Know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just the way he does it, you know. I don't know. It's, How tall are you, see? Corey? About six yeah, four after a couple now. beers. I miss all kinds of balls. What are you like? Though, so, are you like, <laughs> know, so I, I wouldn't copy my. Uh, I mean, five, I can. Five, five, I can power it like a little bit five, sometimes. Five but. ten maybe. Well, if the reason being is your know. wingspan makes a lot of difference. I, how tall well, I got you? long arms. Yeah, I was, you look like for my. For, for I'm 5'10". only five ten, but I got yeah. pretty long arms for my. So that's five, why he's at the back mm -hmm. end of the yeah. two stick. Yeah. yeah. But I would agree with holding it loose. Well, you, yeah. Well, there's such a trick to shooting if you can just stroke through the ball. Well, Sometimes I mean, the cue only so weighs much. 19 ounces, and it's just there's no well, reason the to death six. grip and yeah. squeeze, and your muscles just. You know, it's like, like I said, take a cue on a string and drop it. I bet you the, it'll run straighter than any human being could do with it in their hand. Yeah. Okay, I've you know? got a question that's one I've always wanted. I've never asked Corey this. What was it like back in 2000 when you just won everything? It was like nobody on earth. 11 to, one, 11 to nothing in the U.S. Open. That was that, pretty that's still, to me, probably one of the most impressive runs I've ever heard. It about. felt it felt great until I had all the players start collaborating against me. Oh, let's change all the rules. <laughs> yeah. You know? They well, did. They no, figured was, out the way to break, though, and they all had see, to figure out a way to you're stop. You're so creative. You know? that you, you, between you and Sardo, you ruined pool, man. They should have just copied <laughs> his break. I don't know. I mean. Well, i got to tell, I gotta but tell you see, something. But see, what my... My theory, when I was a kid, I was always, you know, my, my goal in pool was I wanted to try and be able to run out every time or perfect the game, you know. I wanted to try and, like, my goal wasn't to win tournaments. It was to try and be perfect, you know. Yeah. And, Corey. you know, I never really achieved anything close to it, you know, to be able to run out every time. But, I, you know, uh, certain rules make it to where that's impossible. You know, I think a kid should should be able to achieve a dream if he, you know. Well, that's another reason why I think that amateurs need to be involved with making pros because now mm -hmm. you have, you, you know, there's, there there's has to be a correlation. Because to, to instill the younger players to play, they got to see somebody that's great. That's where you get the hero worship. Sure. That's the same thing with any sport. Mm -hmm. I got to tell a quick story about okay. Corey and, and a gambling match and something about the rackets. I think it was interesting. In uh -huh. 2000, he's winning everything in sight. And I'm playing the best pool I can play at the time. I still couldn't beat him even. But I thought I was a real smart guy. And I said, I'll take the seven. He goes, you got it. Just real quick. I'm like, uh -oh. like nobody's offered me the seven at this time. Like, I'm beating Moron or Ernesto even. So I'm thinking I've got the dead nuts. And I got a backer. We play a race 11 for 1,000. I have not seen him win all these tournaments. And I've only heard about, I've never heard about his soft break. So we bet the $1,000. <laughs> and my backer's standing right there. And I'm not kidding. Corey gets up the first game and does this. He hits it like this. And I'm like, what in the hell was that? Yeah. Well, my backer, come, I go over and talk to him. He goes, oh, you're stealing. I was like, no, no, no. I think he did that on purpose. He hit it real soft, and he played shape on the one. I somehow won the set, and then I started copying it. I broke just like he did. Now my backer's going crazy, going, you're an idiot. You're going to get robbed. I'm like, no, I think there's something to this. Hitting them soft, make the corner ball. Play, you know, pattern yeah. rack and all that. And it was the damnedest thing I've ever seen. I mean, here's a guy giving me the seven ball and he broke them four miles an hour. <laughs> I mean, the balls aren't even getting to the rails. Yeah. And it was it was pretty cool. Well, but what about the time when well, you played Shannon Dalton one pocket? And broke them wide, wide open. Well, that's something yeah. main, wasn't it? The only reason I did that is because I, I, I didn't play any one pocket at that time. Like, I'm and I, I'm playing Shannon Dalton, who moves great. So yeah. what am I going to do, play safe and try and move with him? So I was just like, well, I'm just going to break him hard like eight ball, and hopefully I make one in my pocket. 
<laughs> and I did. I did. Or if I didn't make it, I left him safe. Yeah, uh, but he, he was so there sick. was more thought into it than that. He was oh, doing I a know. hook. He I was know. doing the inside English hook break where he double clacked the end ball. That was I'll try smart. And, I'll try and do it. I'll you try can actually do this on purpose. I'll try. No, no, I didn't double hit the end ball. I, oh, I, I thought I you were double it hitting it. it. <laughs> no, I hit it. I hit it hard. All like the balls were ended up on your side of the table. I had that tape. I hit it. the break. Well, how many times have you played eight you, balls? You can break them like this. You can hit in between the 10, 15, and draw to here with inside. The 12 will kiss, and you'll actually not sell out to the, the other one, guys. The one that I did, I, I hit it from here, and I hit the second ball pretty full, but I tried to follow the cue ball because there was it, the balls would open up, and I could get the cue ball through here and over here. But all the balls <laughs> end up, I don't Like know. in our one pocket match, Corey, no I, if you do that, I won't be mad. <laughs> Look at this, see? He makes one in his hole. No, I made one in, in the other pocket. No, but I didn't oh. sell out. This would be my pocket. Yeah. No. Yeah, you, you're not on this table. You probably could break like that. Your opposite that's pocket no is your pocket. Court. That's no good. <laughs> Maybe, Justin, make sure we go through the rules of the pocket crazy. before the game. <laughs> this is my pocket. And give him your theory on the two way shot, the Corey Gould two way shot. Oh, the I mean, two way shot. Well, the, that's rotational game. They got the new rules to 10 ball, so if you luck a ball in, you have to call it your ball in pocket. Correct. So if you if you luck a ball in, uh, incoming player gets to shoot again, right? Incoming player can make you shoot or, or accept the shot. Yeah. If you luck one in. Yeah. But now if you miss the ball and hook them, it, that's not. That's where I think I should. See now that. we've played we've played the rule where anytime you miss. Do they really? Anytime you miss well, a that's ball. That's what counts if they don't. You it's gotta the it's the incoming right? player's option, and that rule I think is a little bit better than than the one that we're playing, but. I mean, it, gets, it slows the game down a little bit. Well, again, like confusing. Justin made a point, it, 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 it could, it's what the nope. viewers want to see, man. Well, yeah. They don't know why you're shooting again. Yeah, they don't why know why you're shooting, shooting again. Here, well, here's I a, mean, they'd figure it out real quick if we just... They'll figure it out if we do the same thing every time. Okay, snooker's confusing until you watch it three times. If we would play the same game of pool, the same rules for more than one damn tournament, the whole world would know what we're doing out there. But every tournament is something different. Yeah, there, there's some you know, truth to that. Which I love. I love all the different games. But I'd rather make a million dollars a year and we'll just play eight ball every time. I'd so here's it. Or, you know, 50,000 maybe. <laughs> here's something that came up. <laughs> Tell me what the fans think of this. I said, I said, well. 25,000? <laughs> the more I think about it, it's like 11,000? <laughs> I, said, I said, well, if I got I to gotta call my ball, I got to call a ball in pocket so I can't really play any two way shots. You know, and that's the argument because. A lot of players, no, they'll only, play, they'll play two-way shots. It's only applies in 10-ball. I'm just clarifying. It's only applies in 10-ball, yeah. It's not a call game. Yeah. It's only so right ball. here, if I have this shot, I feel like I feel like I got a good chance to make the three-ball, you know. But I'm shooting at the one. Should I Should I try and, well, it'd probably be, it'd probably be like this, maybe. Something like this, where it's not guaranteed I'm going to make the three. But it's a good chance I'm going to make the three, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to shoot at this because... It's a good chance you're going to make the three? Maybe not from there. <laughs> Take <laughs> it down a notch. That ain't no good chance. That's, that ball was frozen. Maybe from there. Frozen. I mean, Efren maybe, but we're crackers. We ain't making that. <laughs> maybe from there. So, so if I'm playing call shot, if I'm playing regular nine ball, I feel like I have uh, 60 to 70 percent to, to make either one at least. Now, if I have to call one or the other, that brings me down. Now I feel like I'm maybe forty uh, percent. You know. Then you're not supposed to shoot it. So now I'm not. It's all mathematical. Yeah. So, awesome. so now I'm not supposed to shoot. So I'm supposed to play safe now. But my question was, is what's the difference if I just say I'm calling the one and the three? At least I'm calling them. You know, call we two would balls, keep so him to a two-ball two ball limit. Balls. You can only call up to two. <laughs> because you're like, because <laughs> Mike Massey would just win every tournament. He'd call like there, nine balls, the and they'd all go. <laughs> But I mean, what's the difference if you call two? You're not lucking anything. But in. you're saying that you'd have to make one of them. Yeah, you got it. Well, yeah, you just got to make one. Because if you call two, you don't have to make two. See, that's that's where. No, it's... you don't have to make both. You yeah, just okay. got to make one. Hmm. Oh, okay. See, well, I, I understand what you're saying. I disagree, but I, I really. I want to see what the fans think. You, well, you that's think fine. I don't We're think it matters now. because not, I don't know if you're. I'll be honest with you. I think the fans are going to want to just play eight ball more than anything. That's what they go play. They want to. The eight ball has generated as much discussion. Right, because yeah. because that's what they play every Trudeau was on to something, man. That's mind, what they play. Keep in mind, Just play that. Keep in mind, too, we might play a set of eight ball. We play three matches full of eight ball, and they go, oh, eight ball sucks. I'm tired of that. Let's do something else. Yeah. 
That's so. Okay, yeah. That's I an experiment. You can't, you can't judge small. You, know, you yeah. have a lot of data. You're right. I personally yeah, think true. that you guys are going to run more racks than you think you're going to run. Well, we're going to run some, but. The Eight ball would be tough with short races. Like, the way the IPT did it, they, they did it over, you know, you did round groups robin. and round robin, yeah. and you're playing 100 games, and who wins by the 100 games, kind of, you know. I think we need to move towards the format that judges your play over the course of, course. of the whole week. Of course, you don't get beat because you lose hill hill. You gotta be play really pool. careful of those things because you, you get a little bit of collusion going on. You get a lot yeah, of collusion. Yeah, if you can do away with that, you know. That's hard to do away with. You know, yeah. Yeah, the pool is a brutal thing when you go, you get up and you win a match 11 nothing, 11 nothing, 11 nothing, and then you lose 11 10, 11 10. Sure. And you're one round out of the money. And you people, know what, go, though, people I... go, you're playing bad. It's like, well, no, I'm 43 games winner against world class players, yeah. and I didn't even make the cut. I know. No, pool, you know, what are you going to no. do? You know what, if I, if I had a choice to go play, to go fly to the Philippines and play a race to seven, alternate the break, or go play a tournament that's uh, 100 games and they might collude a little bit. No, I'd rather, I'd rather have them collude. Collude all you want if I'm go a good ahead. player. No, I, yeah. I, I don't want to fly I, I around it's... the world to play races to five. Okay, here's that's my no question. Good. There's been a big thing lately in certain circles, certain people, that are crying, not crying, that's the wrong word. They're very concerned that American players aren't going to international events. Right, we're not. I don't have the money to go. That's what I well, I'll go represent the United well, States. Somebody wants to pay my expenses. The main thing is the format. Well, they're saying as a player, you're supposed to, that's Well, they're nuts. They have never played a sport for a living then. <laughs> I know pro golfers that sit at home and go, pro golfers, I actually know these guys. I talk to them. They're like, well, the tournament doesn't pay enough to fade the expenses to go. Yeah. I'm not going to travel across the world to play well, a nationwide I, event to make 2200 if you make the cut. Not only it's the that, same in they, every sport. But they make the format to where it's so lucky that the, you don't you you can't guarantee that you're going to finish well. well I the totally thing agree the people with at home Corey. in in fairness to them If you can them, guarantee that you're going to finish well, I'd go. They He's think really, we make a lot more money than we how do. Can you, how can anybody guarantee anything? What I'm saying is if if they were playing races to 100 well, that's and the money was the well, same, no. I might go because I feel if like If it was like any other sport, you know. Uh, you know, a, a pool cue company would say, here, John, here's $2,600. Go stay in China, represent us, spend three weeks there, give some lessons, do some podcasts. They get their money's worth. I've won the U.S. Open. I can't get 1500 to go to a pool tournament. And then people want to give me grief about it. I blew 80000 on a mortgage on my house. I'm broke because of the house. Well, I'm not broke, but I'm in a bad spot. And then I got to listen to, I'm a coward because I don't want to go play the world championship, pay 3000 It's just some guy in a cubicle that's never played pool for a living. He don't know what he's talking about. Well, I, I think, see, I think Corey's right. Th these races with these, I'm not joke. a fan of alternating break. I understand the concept. You know, I like winter break. I'm why, gonna why, you know it. why I'm gonna Shane explain. Van Boning and two guys go to these tournaments? Because they're the ones with the big sponsors. If Shane loses his sponsorship and I get 50000 a year from QTech, no, I'm not saying I want that. Yeah. I'd like him to, I promise I'll go. I'll go to every tournament. Yeah. I can't afford it. Does that make me a, 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 a whatever? I don't know what it makes me, but that's the way it is, you know? I mean, I agree with you with the alternate break. I don't like alternate break. I think it, all it does is make the matches closer. Say me and him break and run five apiece. Yeah. And we're playing alternate break race to nine. We might as well be playing a race to four in the games we actually played in. Yeah. Or you might get, <laughs> you know. the cue ball might get kicked in the side. Well, I'd like to Just, see tennis play you know, win or serve, like, like keep the serve if you win it. You'd, it'd be stupid. I was playing, I got a format I was working Just on get that beat followed, every set. A, <laughs> followed a tennis format. It's interesting. But, but you know. And I, well, yeah, if we're playing, you know, uh, if you want to exactly copy the tennis format, exactly. No, I, but I, I don't can, mind that. I was, all, all, you know, six sets, uh, win by long. two. No, I'll do that. If they want to do tennis, I'll do that. But it, don't make me do a race to seven tennis. Right. That's not yeah. good. Yeah. You know, uh, another thing is, is uh, I might play the whole tournament. These good players, they want, they like alternate break or whatever. Think about this. You play your whole tournament. I mean, you're gonna you. You're a good player, so you're going to win some matches. So, on average, maybe people break against you. Win or break, they might break five times in a race to 11 on average or something like that. So now, if you want to change the rules or alternate break, you automatically spot everybody half the breaks. So you're giving up weight. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I don't like it. Well, we never, no, we never answered, we never answered your question. I, I think there's, there's a severe chance that you know, like roller derby was big. Where's that at, right? Where's the Roman Empire at? That was big. Well, pro pool. I'm 39 years old, and he's 30 something. We're the last of a generation. Believe me, there's not a hundred kids in America. And don't worry, Americans could dominate 
any sport they want. We have 300 million people and resources and money, but we don't care because a kid looks at me and goes, well, if I'm one of the best players in the world, I can make 15,000 a year net after expenses. I'm gonna go be a motorcycle cop or do something else. If the, if the industry don't start at least taking the last 10 or 12 of us that can play and putting us in these tournaments, you're right. American pool will fall to the wayside so well, bad. Well, here, I, I'm okay I, with it. The industry's not got the money. Well, John, well, they got enough money to send me to a pool tournament now, well, man. John, if there's any kids watching this podcast and, yeah. you know, you're, you're telling them they're not making any. But I will tell them this. It's a fun life. Oh, it is a fun life. It's a fun life. Fun life. And, and you played golf before. These guys walk 18 holes every day, go do the practice round, walk again, walk again. All we do is walk around the pool table, stay inside. Sure. It's pretty easy, <laughs> believe me. It's pretty really? easy, and oh. I've never worked a day in my life, and... I enjoy it. Well, yeah, but you're one of the best on earth. Well, I know. You imagine giving us, you've got to be one of the top on earth to just squeak it out. The people that are watching this want to be pool players. They like, they like pool. Well, good. I will say that there's been a, I feel, I feel a rejuvenation of the interest in the junior programs. Like we sponsored between uh, 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 our office, which is CSI, and Roy Pastor, which is one of our USA Pool League, uh, League operators on the East Coast. 21 kids we sent to the Good. to uh, Well, I think if you which league is operators going on right now. You league operators get together with the juniors, the high school programs, the college scholarships, pro pool. Oh, the thing about pool that's interesting to me is it's got more potential than anything I've ever seen. I can't think of anything else that has this many people doing it so avidly that makes as little revenue for the industry, for you guys, for us. We're onto something here. If somebody could line this up right, we got to package like, it together. My God, somebody could get rich. We could all make some money. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying you know pool's no good, don't play, but something's got to give here pretty soon, or or it just won't be a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like people look at us. If if we make good good money, do you know how many diamond tables would be sold in America? Think about it. I, yeah, if, I, if a parent knew, man, little Timmy doesn't even have to be as good as Corey Duell. If he could just be a good player, he'd make 50000 a year. If he's as good as Corey Duell at pool, he can make 250000 a year. Wouldn't be a tough sell. They'd knock out a wall, and they'd put a diamond. In their home. In their home. But yep. instead, the parents go, if I catch you on a pool table, you're grounded. That's not yeah. what you want. And the industry has got to figure out a way to give give them something to shoot at at least a college scholarship forget the pros well they're not they're, make some college scholarships for the kids it's or interesting something that you mentioned i'm just going to interrupt which i do all the time uh lindenwood university yeah. uh, which is in indiana i believe they hired um mark wilson and and as it's a great mark idea wilson well they actually have a scholarship program at pool now they're treating pool like fantastic you treated treated golf well that's great and that's and, what it should be they're looking for a couple of real potential you know kids to okay and and if anybody needs any information if you can't find contact our office but it's uh, just there's just think about for example all the golf courses i know i was to go to golf but think about it if there was no such thing as golf scholarships and pro golf and the junior golf tournaments and all that how many parents would Buy the thousand dollar clubs, a thousand dollar membership for what? Up. For what? So you could just be right. a good golfer. There's the reason the reason they up. want to buy all that stuff is because they they think that their kids going to make big money and be of real course. famous. Of course, I deal, and I know what no. I'm talking about because I'm around golf courses. The parents think, man, he could play on the Hooters tour, and make more money than a school teacher. You think you think golf is tough? I mean, try tennis. Yeah, you but get, the, I mean, there's, there's a pot of people in tennis. I mean, you know, in golf, you can go down 500 and they're still making good money. Well, that tennis, is true. You're right. Tennis is tougher. Here's, here's a big difference with tennis. I, I, I went to college with some guys, three of them to this day. They were uh, NAIA top tennis players. Monsters. These yeah. are not like world beater tennis players. Yeah. They're solid tennis players. All three of them to this day have done nothing in their whole life but play tennis and teach tennis. Teach. And they make a living at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they work at tennis clubs and, and they make. Tennis. Well, the thing is, there's a lot of sports that don't make any money. I know some of the best desert dirt bike racers who's ever lived they make nothing they don't make as hardly as well, much as i do so i'm not crying yeah. there's a they're pro racquetball players what do they earn pro rodeo guys don't earn none. but i just think the potential for this is bigger than what it is i've seen it in snooker i've seen it in asia well i and totally agree three three bazillion people play the game why is there not any money in it i don't get it well there's, you know, this is the reason why there's no money in it is because it's the, not exciting. The pool, the pool leagues are making all the money, and not, well, they don't kick anything yeah, back into professional I'm not pool. So, name names, so all you guys got to do is everybody out there in a pool league, if you can't turn pro playing in your league, don't play in that league. Well, 
If you want to be people, a professional, you understand something. A lot of people play yeah. pool to just for recreation. Yeah, sure, sure. Let's take I know, bowling. but now, I, I'm an, I agree with you. you know. You're actually, right. There's golfers that couldn't care less about Tiger Woods. That it. They wouldn't bowling. care if you put them you in the a, Masters. I don't want to go. You to that. take a guy that's a 120 average bowler, and he's going to say, "You're not taking any of my money and giving it to the of bowling tour." Right. I could care less You're right. about the. No, I don't so think that's what know, he's on to something. But I, see, I agree with him. Here's that's what it is, in my opinion. If it was exciting, pool. Right, let's say somebody's. Ahead, let's say somebody's never seen jobs. pool. Okay, here's what pool needs. Watch any TV show, reality shows. All, it's all arguing and fighting. It's not <laughs> gentlemanly. It's not. Let's be real here. If you know pool like you guys and you watch us play, you're into it. But if somebody's never seen a pool match and they watch Corey and I play a match, they're like, oh my god, this is boring. But if we get in an argument and we almost throw down, oh, don't worry, that'd make it on well, reality John, TV. What do you need you for? What, what do you need a guy who can I, play pool? Yeah, we want well, no. chicks with big tits and That's what they, well, <laughs> well, that's actually, <laughs> now you're on to something. And people want to see great pool. They want well, to see great pool, you know. Yeah, but. That's what I want to see, do. I think. You can't, if you, once you start down that yeah. road, yeah, you end up just. Jersey Shore, and, and, and we don't need people to know how to play pool. Yeah, but I, I, but look at Earl Strickland. He's the most followed player there is, the male player. And it's because yeah. of the way he acts, not because of the way he plays. We all play good. But being a gentleman, where's that got like Tommy Kennedy? Where's that got the, you know, the guys who yeah. never say a word, never yeah. cause any controversy, they're broke. It's not good for them. You need to be, you need we to need, create some well, excitement. What, what you need to do I is Poole's biggest error is, is they have not developed the characters of the players. Right. Go. Good, Good or bad. Guys, we got to get yeah. off. Okay. okay. What do you want to talk? Thanks, Four everybody. Rounds. Okay. That's cool. Sorry. Uh, no, no. Each one of you guys give me a road story. Oh, oh God. A road story? So, your, your best, famous, your, your, your most hilarious so road story. My or? best road story. Okay. This is good. Hmm. Well, me and Alex Pegalion. Oh, no. <laughs> We're on the road, and and he wants to eat. How old were you? How old were you? I was 19, 20. Maybe. I think we were 20 or 20. Yeah, I think we were both 20 because we so wanted to play. Okay. We wanted to play on the Camel Pro Tour, but we weren't allowed because you had to be 21 to play. And we were both 20 years old, and we couldn't play. So we went on the road, and uh, you're from you were he, from he, he wants to eat, he wants to. Eat Chinese food and chicken feet and all kinds of stuff and and I couldn't stand it. I'm I'm trying to eat, you know, regular American food and he's getting mad at me and you know, so we're arguing a little bit and uh, we go into this pool room. I take him to this place in Dayton, and he's playing a guy and he's shooting shooting like this right here. He's shooting, you know, like this. He's he's beating the guy. He's, we win like 3,500 or something and then we go to this other place and he goes and beats this guy out of. Out of a thousand, we're we're all happy. You know, we had a good day. We made money. We're like, sweet. You know, let's go. Or, let's, go know, let's, let's go eat or whatever. And uh, so I'm driving. I'm driving this old beater Chrysler Cordoba. And and I'm I'm, I'm no lie. If I'm sitting in it, this is the front end right here, <laughs> with an em emblem, you know, on the front. This is the front end. I'm driving this thing. And hook. I gotta I gotta I gotta slam the gas down to get it started. And vroom, you know, real loud. And uh, so Alex, he's never he's never drove a car before. He's like, he's like, man, let me drive, let me drive, let me drive. I'm like, all right. So, <laughs> so I let him, I let him drive. I'm like, okay, you know, you won all the money today. That's yeah, sure. So I give him the keys. He revs it up, gets in. He's got it. You know, he's he can't even see over the dashboard, right? <laughs> That's all thinking. You know, he can't even see over the dashboard. We're parked in the pool room. He he slams the wheel to the side and gasses it. <laughs> And we drill the car to the side of us. Right? Oh, oh. Well, it's it's the guys we were just playing in the in the pool room. Oh right? god! So then we we smashed their car. So we had to give them all the money back. <laughs> oh wow! That's a true story. Yeah. Oh man. That's that's that a good one there. I never heard that one out of you. All right, your turn. Oh, uh, how am I gonna top that? I I mean, I've got some stories that can make me look like a genius or an idiot. I got some stories that can make pool look great or bad. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, instead of talking about, oh, I beat this guy and I beat that guy, I would have to say one of the most frightening things I've ever been through uh, was, and I don't wanna name the pool room, but it was here in Vegas about 12 years ago. And I'm, I'm playing a match against, uh, I think it was Cliff Joyner. I think Cliff could confirm this, but you know, I'm shooting and, and uh, well, I'll tell you, two times this happened in the same place, but this is where all the action is. I really hate to tell us about a pool, That's okay. but it's one day, 
there is like a 10 on 10 brawl with ashtrays, bottles, oh, knives, geez. sticks, and pool balls. And I don't know if you've ever been they in the middle the of balls? a melee. Oh yeah. Okay. This is a, this is a noise like it sounds like a train crashing. I mean, literally. <laughs> now there's the, there's like the the bad side of the pool room and then the action mm -hmm. side. Well, we're all over here. Mm -hmm. Well, we hear this noise, and I mean, we're looking through the railing, and I mean, pe there's blood everywhere, and people are unconscious. The security guard is drawn down with pe with a gun. I mean, it was hairy. Great story, so, John. So like an idiot, I want to hang out in this place. It's exciting, right? <laughs> so about six months later, I'm playing Cliff, and uh, and all of a sudden I hear pop 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 pop. Nine millimeter flying through, hitting the back wall. Well, Ooh. it's my shot, and I'm straight in. So of course I duck for a minute, and I go back. I go back to shooting. I figure, you know, he's ran out of ammo. I'm fine. So, so as we're leaving the pool room, now they were firing in at the security guard. He's firing back. So it's a full blown gun battle, flying over our heads, hitting the back wall. As we leave, there's bullet holes in the sides of cars, and I just thought. Does Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods have to go through this? You know what I'm saying? Like, this cannot be for real. So, I mean, I've just seen it all playing pool. I've, I've, I've been beat up. I've been robbed. I've been, I, I've been through a lot of stuff that's made me kind of just... Man, you must be a dick. I've never had anything well, like that happen to me. No. <laughs> they always, no, I'm just a little you know guy. You know what they always do to me? I beat them out of all their money. They, you know what they usually do? They say, hey, there's a spot down the road. Oh, <laughs> I'll got, take you no, over no, there. No, no, no. <laughs> All the guys I beat out of thousands, they take me to dinner and golf and want to stake me. It's some guy I beat out of 30 and embarrass him. They're yeah. the ones that, that grab me by the throat. Yeah, you, you can't know, embarrass I, It's him. unbelievable some of the, some of the you know, things I've seen people do over $20 and $50. I've never been, I've never been that harassed over five grand. It's the guys that lose 200 that want to kill you. It's crazy. You have to be a psychologist. To be a to travel the road, you have to be able to analyze people and make sure that you're not well, pissing them well off. Well, the problem is there's you know, a lot of psychological moves because you, you can. You problem can, is you I didn't know none of that 20 years ago. After doing it all these years, yeah, I can read you when can, I'm in a bad spot. That's when, right. You can when see I was the 23, it happens. I thought everything was fine. Corey, tell us, give me another story about you and Alex. I can't <laughs> oh, there's oh, I'd love to tell a couple on Corey, but I don't think I oh, can. Oh no, you. No, this, is, this is it's fair play. <laughs> leave those alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me and Alex? How'd you guys hook up? How'd you meet? Where were we meet? We met uh, some tournament. I think I gave I, I gave him my number and I said, hey, call me. I'll take you to some places. I saw him at a tournament and nobody really knew him yet. So uh, He looked like he's 16. You yeah, know actually, I went to Canada a few times. I went to Canada and I was playing playing a guy, Elaine Martell, right? The he's, dancing he's, bear. The dancing bear, you know, and I'm up there with Alex and I'm... I was playing good, and I, th I thought I was, oh, man, I'm stealing this tournament well, against these, you know, still Canadians. still 98 or so. Yeah, I was, I was 19, like 20, years something ago. like that. Okay. Okay. So I'm playing Dancing Bear, and he's, he's, he shoots like this. You know. And he's a great player. He shoots like that, right? And I'm like, you know, there's no way this guy's going to beat me. I'm telling Alex that, you know, sure enough, he, he beats me. <laughs> and then he goes on to beat me the next, like, six tournaments in a row up there. Just has my number. Those guys just beat me to death. I'm telling every every time I lose, I lose to him. And uh, me and Alex are in the car. That guy can't beat me. I'll give him the six ball. <laughs> but he, he beat me to death. <laughs> Elaine Martell. He still plays uh, pretty good. He's uh, yeah, he's a great he's player. Great. Yeah. I think he's got a 400 ball. High yeah, run. he does. I believe Whoa. he can really he, play straight. I think ball. he's got John's high run beat. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, but I've done it twice, so nobody's beat that. <laughs> just for the record, Bobby. Let's, Bobby. let's just straighten that out before you get carried no, away. No, but like for people, for people, if they're going on the road hustling, like when I went on the road hustling, I never, I never went in there and said, oh, I play bad, blah blah. blah. I would tell them, that works. Better. I'll tell them, you know, I'm a great player. You, you don't want to play me for money. Save your money. Yeah. Don't play me. My be. my uncle makes the eight on the break every time, <laughs> and just you know I'd tell him how good I was, and somehow well, they didn't believe it. It's, well, it's and then you know what? Uh, I can't schools. help it if they don't believe it. Well, yeah, but and there's, you I know, mean, I, like Larry Hubbard used to go in. He never hustled people. He would just go. I am very good. Bring the best player. That's the best way to get That's to the money. Because, because if you start playing way under your speed and playing, oh, high, yeah. you get hurt. I remember, see, yeah. I, I, you know, I used to spend some time in Alabama, Dothan, Alabama. Oh, yeah. My, oh, my really? from Headland. Oh, and, I played uh, a lot of pool there. Well, yeah, but you were never John Schmidt. Originally, you used to travel with Hunter, and you were somebody's name. I couldn't remember. It was a real, you had an alias. Well, I don't, no, I was. Yeah, you did. The first time I went through there, I didn't tell him. I might have said my name's Jay Bird or something. No, but, no, no. But I was known as, I lived 30 miles from there. They knew my name. I'm talking, I'm talking that 15 first, years Yeah, ago. the first time I went through there. 20 years ago. Sure. Well, yeah. And they didn't, and, and they said, uh, 
because you, you know, you you really came into your own by under Bobby's tutelage. Sure, you know, he, he really. Yeah, that was my first road trip. I, I went around with him a little bit, and once well, he, I mean, he shot, taught you really how to play straight pool and everything too. He yeah, Tom. Yeah, He's at least like introduced me to it. Yeah, yeah, he kind of my mentor. Yeah. Absolutely. And Bobby Hunter to this day says you you are the straightest shooting person he's ever seen in his life. Yeah, I mean when I'm as far as actually, yeah, I was with that Hunter cue. I mean I changed cue 17 times in the last five years yeah, and I've looked well. like a clown at times. But uh, yeah, I can shoot him in pretty good when I'm right, like anybody. But 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 you know what happens with that? You know why he says I'm the straightest shooter? Because he's seen me play a lot. Just like there's some guy that thinks he's the straightest shooter because yeah. that's all he gets to see. You know, like I'm really enamored with Boo Weekly's golf game. You know why? Because I got to play a lot with him. Well, if I went and played with David Toms, I'd go, wow, he's just as good as Boo. So whoever you're around a lot, that's who becomes your hero. Yeah. But and it's flattering that Bob says that, but of course I'm not the straightest shooter. I'd never lose a tournament, but I'm one of them. Well, no, but, but, doesn't, but it's, it's nice of him about, to say that. It's just all of a sudden you get a shot and you, yeah. the cue ball's down there and the ball's here in the middle of the table and you got to make it. Well, you know. what happened was I had that hunter cue for 10 years, played a lot of pool. I was really no golf then. I was really pool, 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 had that cue. And I would say that day in and day out, I was playing the best pool of my life. I can still play that speed now, but I have to like hit balls. I used to roll right out of bed in dead stroke because that's all I was doing. You don't. I don't know if you knew this, but a friend of mine, John Duclos. Yeah, I know the, him. That's yeah, some, he said, sounds familiar. Well, he check, was up check. in uh, Washington, and he he he's a he used to play really really good. And you kind of challenged check, him and check, said, check. "Hey, John, let's play something." You know, and John says, "No, I can't play you, but I'll rack him for you." And his first shot, you ran two forty something. Oh so yeah, I think first, I remember. Yeah, yeah, the Seattle. First I'd... inning. Yeah. And John just says, "I don't believe it." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> check, yeah check. Um, Bobby, Bobby, I'll tell you what I learned more from Bobby. Everybody thinks he taught me how to play straight pool. We hadn't played that much pool together. What I learned from Bobby is just that, you know, it's kind of like the motivational thing. He, he would say, look, nobody's going to pat you on the shoulder and say you're good enough. You know, you got to go out there and take it and earn it and win. You, you just can't be weak mentally and make it in this sport. It's a real doggy dog thing. And you're going to go on the road. You're going to play on foreign equipment against great players. When they're comfortable, they're getting staked, and it's going to be a tough way to go to, to, to win money playing pool for a living. But if you've got the gumption for it and the confidence, because talent's overrated. There's a lot of talented guys, but they faint under pressure. Well, they can't make it. Yep. You know what I mean? So he just really strengthened me and said, look, you just got to go out there, play the Corey Duels, play the Alex Pegg Alliance, take your lumps, and believe in yourself because nobody else will. They don't like to see you pack it up and go home. Nobody wants you to win titles but you. And that's the kind of things that he would tell me that, that uh, I'd say shaped me more than more so than how to run a rack of straight pull. He would talk to me more like you lost that match because you you dogged it. You got real scared there. You were you if you play your game, you're gonna win. And I'd go back and play the guy and win. I'm like you're right. If I just quit being scared, I'd win. Yeah, so, no one won the duck. So yeah, he was shoot. a mentor to me. He taught me kind of how to from the neck up how to win and be a good player. That's interesting. You know, I've got a question. We got uh, just hit me two U.S. Open winners here and. Tell me about your U.S. Open wins, either the final match or the year, how it went. Corey, I've got some specific questions for you, but like John, we'll start with you. I well, mean, I remember well you got staked through AZ. Well, it, 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 I, AZ I'll tell you, yeah. I'll tell you something that really bothers me about the whole thing is that people probably to this day have asked me and have wondered, well, why were you getting staked? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to name names, but I had saved up almost fifty thousand dollars over fifteen years of playing pool, and I got in a business deal that was supposed to. I'm putting up the 50,000, I'll make this short, but I put up the 50,000, supposed to get it back in one month. Four years later, I'm still waiting on the money. Oh, so I, I have like $3,000 in the bank and I'm playing no pool. I'm so pissed at life that I'm not playing pool and playing golf. And I hadn't played pool for six months. Really, I had not had the stick out of the case for six months. I know that's hard to believe, but it is what it is. Bobby Hunter calls me, says, come on, go to the US Open. I said, Bob, this guy won't pay me. I haven't been playing. I'm not even going to go to the tournament. I have no chance. He goes, well, just come out and hang out with us. We're going to pay for the room. Just come play golf and hang out and see me. So I went there. Well, no kidding. I get up there. It, this is two hours before the practice or the players meeting. And I'm hitting shots like this. I mean, here's me. Really, I'm trying to make this ball and I'm going. I mean, I am so out of whack. He walks up and he says, well, how are you hitting them? I said, I I'm literally have no chance to even win a single game. So I hit balls for another four hours, four hours straight. I hit balls. He goes, how you hitting them? I said, unbelievable. I'm like back. I'm playing as good as I, and I go on to win the whole tournament. And everybody, of course, Dan Diliberto in the final says, well, John's in dead stroke. You know, he's playing 10, 12 hours a day, which I <laughs> thought was comical because I hadn't played 10 hours in six months. But what that proves to you is once you learn how to play, if you believe it, 
you know, you can do it. But my U.S. Open win, I got to tell this story because I really, I really sticks out in my mind. My U.S. Open win was crazy because my money was all tied up by these people. I figured I'd never get it back. The morning I'm getting ready to go to the tournament, I'm making cornflakes and I see this cockroach crawl into my cornflakes. And I looked at my girlfriend, I said, how am I hitting them? The people that have all my money are driving an Escalade, living in a mansion, and I'm here, and I got a, a roach the size of freaking, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in my cornflakes. <laughs> and I haven't played bull in six months. This was almost like a halfway house I'm staying in, right? As I walk back from winning the tournament, I got this check that's this big. <laughs> And there's these two crackheads up on the balcony drinking 40s. And they, I, you know me, I'm a talkative guy, so they know me by now. And they're like, like, what you got there, John? And I said, well, I won a little pool tournament. You know, it's a U.S. Open check, right? So I go into this shambles of an apartment. I mean, it was, it was an apartment, but it sucked. And I got this thing hanging on the wall, you know, and I'm just thinking, I've really made it in life. Now, my backer, after the backer, the taxes, the savers and everything, I made 12000 winning the Open. But it was funny how I was going through such a rough point. I win the Open, and then those people, like six months later, paid me back. And then the IBT, all of a sudden, I got like 100000 saved, and I'm just doing great. But I was at the lowest point in my entire life when I won that US wow. Open, and nobody knows it. You remember how dark I was? I was playing golf every day. I wasn't practicing pool. I had gave up on pool. You so, know what's funny is that the year that I won the Open, I didn't play hardly any pool. Right. That's the year you smoked everything, though, wasn't it? That, uh, I wasn't playing. I, I was golfing it up every day. Yeah, you when were. I was playing my he best. Was. So he was. He was showing up in wrinkled golf shirts. What table am I on? It was like. <laughs> yeah, but 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 there was a tournament every week, you know, where I was gambling or something yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, you it was like so good. It was sick. It was just there something, was so much more going on. Something about him, he time. never got credit. What where he really doesn't get credit is, everybody talks like. He's winning all these tournaments because of his break. Believe me, he was running out like an alien behind that break. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he figured out the soft break, and it worked some matches. That's not how you win 13 pro events in two years. He played unbelievable yeah. pool. So he never really got the credit I think he deserved by winning all the events he did. But what, what was the story? Anyway, that's my take on my U.S. Open. What was the, two, two things first. Well, just do your, your, tell us about your U.S. Open. My U.S. Open win? And does Mika Eminen still <laughs> have to still gut you at every that. chance? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. It, well, I'll tell you what. I was so nervous in the finals. You know, I got to the finals and I was so nervous. First time ever. U.S. Open. And this is playing Mika, right? Playing Mika. Yeah. That was yeah. the first U.S. Open? Well, first time I got to the finals in the U.S. Open, day, yeah. you know. How many times did you play before that? And you never know. If you dog it in the finals, you, matter, you might get a com you might get something crazy in the head, you know. And how many opens had you played to that point? <coughs> uh, I played every one since I was 16. I cashed in my first one, I think, at 16. Really? Yeah. But I had I had this run out, and I got I was shaking, you know. I got I got this, and I got about like here on the six, I think. And I'm yeah, it's a pretty easy shot. So what's the situation? This is in the finals, last game, or what? No, this is first game. First game. First game, right? Of the finals. Yeah, and you were playing Mika. Finals, playing Mika. Winner breaks back then, right? Yeah. Race to 11. 13. 13 or 11? 11. 11. Yeah, I got, I got this. All I got to do is just draw out to here, you know, shoot the 7, 8, 9. I should, be, I should be out, you know. But I'm so nervous. I just like, I don't know how, how I hit it that bad, but I, I hit it like that. And I came over here and I hooked myself behind the 8. <laughs> Sweet. On the first game. Very first game. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm nervous, I'm shaking, you know, and, it's, and, and I, I'm looking at the kick, I'm like, you know, this is the obvious kick, just kick here, hit it. You know, probably play it to the end rail. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, you know, yeah, I can kick and hit it, I probably lose if I hit it there, but I can, you know, if I, if I kick up this way and I just contact the seven, I got a chance to make seven yeah, or the nine. I remember this right? shot. And I, I kicked it and made them both. I kicked it, just, they hit it hard. They both just going like a trick. They went right in, both of them. <laughs> and uh, and went on to like hit a monster gear after that shot, though. But that that Lemon was like you beat him, that man. was that was the moment I was getting over my nerves, you know. And yep. once I got over my nerves, I played good. Do you find when you get like in the zone like that, I'm, you know, you just you see where to hit everything. You just, you know, it's just it's just. I get real nervous, and then 
I think I play my best. I don't know. Maybe I play my best when I'm nervous. I'm scared to make a mistake or something. But, uh, but then I, I'll be real nervous in the beginning, and then I kind of get over it through the middle, and then after the match is over, and I go to, like, I won't be shaking while I'm playing, but after the match is over, I go to sign an autograph or something. <laughs> I can't even hold the pen. Well, yeah, because you're I can't hold it. I'm like, it's, it's the aftermath. It's, it's the afterwards is when it, when it really hits you. Let me, I just want to, I'm not changing the subject, but it has to do with the same concept. You put pressure on yourself, and you won that one 11 to nothing. Mm -hmm. Appleton just won the the thing in Doha, and he had the guy 11-3, 12-6, three, three, and it went hill hill. Yeah. Oh, now, wow. what's your where's your mind at when that stuff starts happening? You, you, and this is that's a well, I don't care if it's winter. It was winter breaks. What I try to say to myself is, anytime I'm in a race and I lost six games in a row, I've dogged it or got unlucky. However, it's happened. Anytime you're in one set of pool, and you've just lost five, six, seven games in a row, and you're still hill hill, man, it's your luck. It's your day. Because you know they're going to get beat 13 to 2 when you do that. So he might have fainted for a full hour in the match and still was able to beat 12 12. That being said, yeah. you know, it's, it sucks, but you've got to look at it that way. See, I've always felt more pressure when I'm ahead and the guy starts catching up. Oh, sure. You know, then it's just, you know, you, it's. You know. Yeah. Anyhow, you know, so then you, then you were just saying about the other uh, U.S. Open. You were there. What was the question you'd asked earlier? You've been in the finals twice, right, Corey? Yeah. yeah. What was the other question? Uh, Appleton beat me, and it was uh, that it was win by two, but it went hill hill, and nice then I lost that game, so I would have lost. And then it was win by two, and then I think I got up one, and then I, he he ended up. He That's ended like up two years me. ago, one year or two. Yeah, I've gotten. I've had a few chances to win. I've gotten fourth. Uh, Third? Did I get third? I've gotten fourth and fifth a couple times. I find it just. And then I got I, second. Well, I got another question for. You. Are you the guy that taught Donnie Mills how to break nine ball? Donnie kind of, he kind of watched you and. and you know he it. he yeah he he real really studies me you know but <laughs> I didn't really come out and say hey Donnie this is how to break you know but he uh, kind of you know he's. He's a student of the game. He's a pretty smart guy. So I'll tell you what, I was knows. totally impressed with the year he played, in the, and he comes in second. Oh, he can play. That's no fluke. Man, oh, man, yeah, he can, can play. he play? He yeah, was he on can fire. Donnie's a play. shot maker. Yeah, he plays Donnie good. Donnie Mills, ball. is that what you're talking? Yeah, about? yeah he's yeah. shot maker. He he real, just real blew good. me away. I was a fan. You know? I mean, he just. I mean, yeah. He, you know, yeah, the only people play. he lost to that year were the ones that was. He's uh, got that. Powerful. I mean, you take two equal players and you get one that's got the break figured out in nine ball. I mean, they are the most amazing thing I've ever seen was when I watched Donnie play Shane. Yeah. 89, 89 and Donnie ball. made the, the making the corner ball every time, and and Shane was too. But Shane wasn't really getting very good runouts. And then at the end, they were close. And then at the end, you know, they were both soft breaking, playing nine ball, on, and that's what I expected the whole set to be—just soft breaking, whatever. Rack your own. And then Shane all of a sudden goes here and starts popping the cue yeah. ball, flying it back here. He, he, and he had he just got in a rhythm. He yeah. needs he needs to hit that break to hit a rhythm, I think. You know, I think it pissed Donnie good. off. Like, this cannot be. No, no, I tell you. I Donnie said, Donnie you break like that the whole match, we can play again. Well, Donnie, I, he yeah. said. He's I'll like, bet on Donnie. He's, like, he's like, oh, my God, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to win. It's like, he can't beat me. Playing Nobody this. could. I can't. I can't. And, but then yeah. Donnie misses a couple balls. Shane's playing like Shane. And yeah. he yeah. caught him. You know, the but, reason Shane started breaking like that yeah. was because Donnie was shooting his nuts in. Yeah. Yep. Donnie was shooting his nuts, and he was stuck like nine or ten games. Yep. Yeah. And he was so – I've never – he had – Donnie he had Shane. He was like, I don't bag. care. I'm just going to break him up. Yeah. Home. Yeah. He's and like, then he ended up winning. But when because, you break like yeah, that, yeah. you only – you know, you say he played good, and he did, but you only get to play as good as the balls will allow you because yeah. you've got to get a shot. Donnie's break, you get to play good because you're going to be straight in every time of the one. If they played again and Shane breaks 100 miles an hour – now, Shane's the best in the world at the well, 100 No, they offered hour. that game. Donnie will beat him like that. There's no way anybody can beat Donnie Mars, getting straight Mars, in on Mars the will line. play that game. Mars, it's, the money's there. Who's Mars taking? Oh, Who's Shane can play Donnie. Oh, again? if Shane hits him as hard as he can. And Shane's going Shane's gonna to promise to hit him hard. Dude, we did this two years ago. can't win, man. We did it two years ago. I'd like to see that match. No, that's... I think, I, I mean, maybe... Think maybe, about it, Justin. Maybe Shane's better off. On every game. Dude, I, I, well, the, here's the reason I don't think you'll see the game. But do you know... It's because Shane, it's too It's too tough to fade. Sure. Mentally. It is when you when you have to rely on the other guy missing or making a mistake, 
to get a shot. And you know why Shane was only down? <laughs> That's the only way you get to play is but, if the other guy. But you know up. when Shane started breaking hard, the only reason Shane was only down ten games is because Shane was smart enough to break soft the entire time. If Shane well, hits him as hard as he can. But here's the, the difference, though. I mean, when Shane started breaking hard, number one, it screwed with Donnie's head it because did. he's like, oh my God, what? Well, and you know, Donnie's a, he's my yeah. buddy, but you know, he's he gets in his own head. Yeah. yeah. And he. But that was kind of fooling with him. But the other thing was, now all of a sudden, these guys have been playing for two days. They're shooting the same balls in the same pockets. Right. <laughs> yeah. For 12 yeah. hours. Yeah. Over yeah. two days. Now, now, shit's all over the place. You know, right. he's having to go. Which Donnie's a great player. He can do that. But it still threw him out but of his But it's just different. And what it was, I really think, was it, it, it's, it's, it's jarred him enough to where Shane got back and, you know, Dude, Shane's a front runner. I mean, yeah. you've seen him, Corey, when he played ten ball and went unconscious on uh, you for about four same, hours. Yeah, once he once he got know. a lead and started getting in stroke, he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. you know, Tough I mean, it's beat. like once that it, it is, it's like a goddamn train. Yeah, you know. I mean, Shane is the greatest. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. No, that I'm just he he, and he, he knows he had ran the stone cold the nuts in that game. And Donnie breaks like he breaks. I mean, Shane or any living human, Bustamante, nobody's gonna supposed get beat 100 to 55. nobody's supposed to beat Donnie at that. No. Game. Not if they break hard and he breaks off. Now, Shane broke soft. And I don't Donnie think anybody's broke soft. If Donnie different. plays like he's supposed to, perfect example. What's the last rack your own nine ball tournament? The million dollar shootout? Who won that? You know, remember that? Now oh, yeah. Happens? Where's my million dollars? <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what I should just I, I should just say that I'm the million dollar champion. You're the only guy right? to ever win that's a million all. dollar championship. Yeah, I'm the only one to ever win the million dollar championship, right? Hey, Justin, just to let you know, it's, uh, we've been looking at it. But I, I got I, one thing I would like to have it discussed. Pattern racking for uh, your 10 ball. Yes or no? Um, you probably just put the 2-3 on the corners, right? Well, I mean, See, I don't what's think tough to do is it's tough to govern pattern racking. It, yes, it is. Because you could, you could. You're racking your own. See, this is the problem. You could well, rack it like this, matter. and then if you the rack it. If the 2-3's on know? the corner, they're going to go squirrely. It don't matter what you do with the rest, right? The only way you could do it is you, is you, could, you could have the other guys say, tell the pattern. I'm yeah. just, Here's, I, the we've way had I, this discussion. Uh, we've never, my thing right. is, uh, from, for our situation here, yeah. we don't have a referee. You guys are professionals. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give a shit if you pattern rack. I don't, I don't either. This table's so tough, it doesn't matter how you rack and, it. And the other thing is, I've had a lot of people tell me, oh, you need this rule, you need that rule, you need this rule. Dude, it's pool. You need naked girls. The and best guy's going to win. I'll tell you the one game that they haven't changed the rules on in a while is eight ball. You know, we I think we all agree that eight ball is a good game. Yeah. Well, that's not yeah. quite true. There, there's well, there's so many different change. rules. Well, I play, mean, like but. our yeah. rules, and this I'm not sure what you where your rules are on this, but if you scratch on the break, this is the BCA pool league now. Okay. If you scratch on the break, it's cue ball anywhere. Sure, anyway. why not? Yeah. Versus cue Some ball. Some of them the are kitchen. behind the line, yeah. Yeah. Are, how are we playing? We're playing I don't ball know. in That's hand anywhere. That's the question. Yeah. That one might be. What's up? Ball in hand anywhere. If we scratch ball. on yeah. the break, it's ball in hand anywhere. Yeah, That's absolutely. Anywhere. That's, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a use But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the 10 ball thing, rack, maybe, I mean, if this table's so hard. Rack the one, two, three up top. Well, I can and use tell the you right now, rack, these are the guys that we've had play on this table Shane, Bustamani, Alex, Earl, Raj, Raj, Oscar. Every one of them pattern racked. Okay. Well, then I don't we're think pattern any, Shane ran one seven, and I don't think what? the next closest. Shane ran a seven on this oh, table? Oh, it was unbelievable. He but, ten ball? Story? Yeah. Oh, but, I'm quitting pool. I suck then. <laughs> but that's strong. past that, strong. I don't that's, three. Threes, no, that's threes not even strong. Like that, Shane should get like $20 million for doing something like well, that. That's so insane. It's even better. It was the first day he was playing Alex. And it was Alex seven unfinished. Him. On this table, Alex has got him. They're playing to 35. Alex is 33 okay. to 27 or 28. I don't, and Shane runs the set and they quit. He oh ran the God, set. Oh, my God. That's insane. You know, it was insane. His 10 ball break is so heinous. I just, I. It was unbelievable. I really wish. If Efren would play safe for me, Shane would break for me, <laughs> I'd probably be a pretty good player. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Um, you guys need to sign up for this pay-per-view. By the way, we didn't even touch on it, but this is the time we're on this event. We're doing a free yeah, that's fee a great idea to pool rooms and bars. I think now, that's a good you idea. Should have gotten into it by now. If you want to still get in, you it's can too contact. Late. Is it too late? Too late. Yeah, because we have about 65 rooms that have signed up. Last yeah. I heard, and that, this is an opportunity because we need more people to find out about pool. You're watching the greatest. Of players course, in the world. yeah. This is. This, I think it's a great idea. It is good. It's good and, uh, marketing. And, and now it, it gets people behind us because sure. the bars get to make a couple bucks because people sit around and drink beer and whatever. Sure. But anyhow, well, 
It starts tomorrow at 4 o'clock Pacific, and it's 8 ball. Race to 15. Got to yep. get them familiar with the product, us and you. And that's, I mean, that's uh, the way that's you do tomorrow. it. And Kenny Schumann's coming in to be a commentator. Do commentary. I'll probably good. slide in a little bit. And, uh, good, good, good. Um, I think, Justin, do you have the codes up yet? Or when can they start um, the money? Yeah, the pay-per-view's up now. You can buy the pay-per-view now. Um, uh, we're still getting all the data together from the rooms. Because, I mean, we started this thing on Monday. Yeah. And we got an avalanche of responses. So Good. I'm going to try and get, uh, get a list of all the rooms and what state they're in and all that uh, up on our Facebook page, and I'll put it on AZ. Yeah. So. But I think it's, uh, this is going to be we, – we need to make this thing grow a little bit because I, I agree with the, our fans. I think TAR is the, one of the, the bright spots. Oh, players. absolutely. I think this is the greatest thing for – everybody gets to watch the world's greatest players play some real live matches, you know. Yeah. And, uh, well, and it's not races yeah. to seven or Oh, uh, See, I agree with stuff. these races to seven are insane. Short race well, is I no good. Flipping coin. I think yeah. I speak for Corey and myself. We are thrilled and flattered either. that you guys have invited us. You could have obviously picked any players. Yeah, we should have. And too. and and we, we appreciate you know you picking us. So thanks. The only guys. thing is, you guys got to be mic'd. And you know the reason we're gonna sell half the tickets that we're gonna sell on this thing because you're funny. Oh so, no! Damn it! You be funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Not a uh, go ahead. Uh, one thing I wanted to I wanted Might to be after this match. I wanted to take a chance to. Uh, you know, plug some of the upcoming tournaments too. We got you know yeah. Southern Billiard Classics coming up in in Tunica. Absolutely. Uh, there's a straight pool in uh, what is it? Dragon Promotion Straight Pool yeah. in New York. New York. Yeah. And uh, you know, me me and him's actually picked on teams to play uh, bonus ball. Bonus later ball. In the yeah, they're they're studios right around so the corner. So that's going to be pretty us. interesting to play that. You know. We're excited. And I, we're waiting to see what they have. Oh, it's right around the corner of the studio. I've it's never literally been to half a mile. The from studio. Here. Yeah. Oh. Walk is anybody over there? I no, just like to a, see the inside of the place one time. Oh, I don't think they. I think it tore oh. down. They were they, they set it up for all their filming and everything, doing some promotion stuff. And they tore it down. Well, it's just, it, was, it was a set. set. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, they're gonna put put it yeah. back up. Um, you know, it, 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 it's interesting that you said because uh, I'd like to plug a little friend of mine. Is a little friend, uh, Ira Lee from Karam Cafe, which is where they're doing the straight pool. Yeah. Okay. Immediately after the straight pool. They're having Efren's going to be playing Bloom yeah. Doll. He's going to play him a set of oh, three really? cushion. Wow. And then a set of nine ball. And then Efren's going to play Kuhlman's, some Bach line. Now, listen, oh, wow. watch that. this is going to be. Well, now Efren's absolute. the best at Bach line, from what I hear. Well, Kuhlman's ain't going to beat him at that. You don't, now, it's, it's, 70, say, it's 71.2 Bach line, which is they draw a line down the center of the right. table. They draw one at the, at the head string, foot string, the center string. And you can only make two Bach lines, two points. Inside the Bach line, then you have to move. So right. that is going to be really, really cool, and yeah. uh, and hmm. uh, that's going to be like August fourth. Oh wow, um, that's That'll exciting. Nice. And Those the Accustat, Accustats. If you guys get on Accustats, we're going to play that that uh, round robin with. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, it's at uh, Sandcastle. Yeah, I, I got I got chosen for that one. Um, I think who who's in it? Bustamani, Efren, Alex, Alex, uh, Shane. Shane. There's six players in the Archer. 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 See, so, you know, years ago, Accustats. Six or eight. Uh, I'm not sure. All, all the players are great, but I, I can't, I'm, I'm so happy that I got picked into that group. You wow. know, it's a good group. Good group of guys. All right, guys. Listen, we appreciate everybody. Yeah. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, 4 o'clock. Let's rock. Bring your A game. I get the winner, you know. Right. <laughs> all right. Hey, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. and. Uh, See you tomorrow at uh, 4 o'clock Pacific, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern. Should be about a five to six hour uh, match each day, so it's, uh, you Eastern guys should be able to get watch it all. Thank you. Good night. God, this table's tight. When's the British Open? Is it this week or next uh, week? I think it's, no, next week. The John Deere Classic.